Hi guys and gals, Dr. Mandis here. Hey, we're going to talk about a final segment on radiation. What I want to get into are the types of radioactive decay, and that's going to lead us into nuclear transformation reactions. Because as the nucleus loses mass or energy, it's going to potentially change a lot of things in the nucleus. And if protons change the nucleus, then you change the element. So that's why they're transformation reactions. The nucleus contains a couple things. One, it contains mass, which I know you know in the forms of neutrons and protons. It also has energy, okay? And so a lot of these radioactive decays, they depend upon two things. You could change the amount of energy, which won't change anything except the energetics, okay? That's gonna get us to our gamma here in just a second, our gamma radiation. For the mass, there are two things it can do. It can just say, hey, let's leave, lose a lot of mass, and that gets us to our alpha decay, where it loses neutrons and protons, or option B, what it does is degrades neutrons into something into protons, or another option, degrade protons into neutrons. So you either lose a bunch of energy, okay, lose the energy, lose the mass, or degrade the stuff that are there, two different types. So that'd be four types of radioactive decay that we got. One more type of nuclear transformation that isn't really radioactive because nothing's radiating out of the nucleus. What if, you know, you got your nucleus surrounded by electrons. What if one of them comes crashing into the nucleus, so to speak? Doesn't happen that often, but it can happen. That will be our electron capture, okay? Electron capture. And that's going to be our last type. So we're just going to play around with some of these radi and types of radiation and get into more detail about them. So let's release some mass from the nucleus. If we release mass from the nucleus, we're going to just, it's a positive helium nucleus because it's two protons and two neutrons. Since it's a helium nucleus, it looks like that. Helium is 4, 2, atomic mass of 4, atomic number 2. So that's why we have the helium. That's why I wrote it right up there. It ejects out of larger, this alpha particle is usually ejected out of larger atoms, not smaller ones. Things beyond zinc, typically. Okay, something in the lower half of the table. Alpha particles don't really have any penetrating power. It's not really dangerous. They're in smoke detectors. But don't ingest them. If they ingest, if you ingest alpha emitters, then they're very, very dangerous. Okay. If you look at my example that I have here that I wanted to, to go over with you. In the example, if you have francium, okay, if it emits by helium, by alpha particle decay, if you look at the total number, let me really blow this up. If you look at the total number here, that's 87 atomic number on the left. 2 plus 85 make 87 on the right. For the atomic mass, 223. 4 plus 219 is 223. So the atomic mass is conserved. The atomic number is conserved. It's the same on both sides. The way you want to typically figure out what's missing here is you don't really write symbols first. You write atomic numbers first, and the atomic number tells you what symbol to write. But more on that in a second. Okay, first let's hustle through these types. I know I get long winded sometimes. So, our next one is release mass. Let's re release a bunch of energy. That's a gamma ray. Yes, the stuff that turned Bill, you know, uh, the Incredible Hulk. Who is he? Bruce Banner. Anyway, I, basically, you're looking at a high energy photon being emitted out of the nucleus. That's what this little asterisk means is just a high energy excited state. So look at a thorium in an excited state. It's becoming thorium without the excited state and releasing the gamma particle. Gamma rays have a lot of penetrating power. They're highly lethal. They're the worst type of radiation. Okay. But they don't change the nucleus. It's not really going to transform anything. And the next two types of decay are called beta decays. One's the regular beta decay is beta negative, and we have positron emission beta positive. These are when either a neutron decays or a proton decays. In the first one, we're going to have a proton decaying, and that is the beta particle being formed. If you think about it, a neutron can fall apart into a proton and an electron. If you look at the math, neutrons are assigned an atomic number of zero by default. Protons got the one because that is a proton. Electrons get assigned a negative one. I know atomic number is supposed to be the number of protons, but these are just assignments so that we can do the math already. And you do the math, sometimes it's nice to just write an equal sign on this side. So zero equals one plus negative one, so that makes sense. Negative one is the electron. This guy gets ejected out of the nucleus. You may ask yourself, I didn't think electrons were allowed in the nucleus. Well, they're not really allowed in the nucleus. High energy, as a neutron becomes a proton, 
it releases an amount of energy from the nucleus. As that energy leaves the nucleus, it cools, so to speak, and becomes an electron. So we're not violating anything by putting electrons in the nucleus, but the beta particle is an electron coming out of the atom itself. Okay, beta particles don't travel too far. They have moderate penetrating power. They are harmful under like three feet or so, so you gotta be careful with them. There's our P32 from our previous one. P32 is the atomic number 15. Negative one plus 16 is 15. Most people screw this up sometimes because they don't put the equal sign in here. The number one wrong answer that I get instead of 16 here is 14. Okay, that should be silicon or whatever it is. Anyway, put the equal sign there and you can do the math right. The next type of radioactive decay, when the proton degrades, we got a proton degrading into a neutron and, electron, and a positron. Think of it as all the mass the proton stays behind is the positive charge that gets emitted. Okay, it gets emitted as energy, which then react, becomes a positron as it leaves the nucleus. Okay, because positrons aren't allowed in the nucleus either, only protons and neutrons. Okay, when the proton degrades, the positron gets emitted. Positron is the antimatter equivalent of an electron. They look an awful lot alike. You got E, E, massless particles, atomic mass zero, opposite atomic numbers. They are antimatter equivalents of each other. Matter, antimatter. Okay, so positron is antimatter, so that unless it hits its an electron, it's not harmful to us at all. They get emitted from various things. They get used in PET scans, if you want to investigate PET scans, if you're into the medical side of things. As in our example, going back to phosphorus, P30 is a positron emitter, okay? It's going to make, release plus one, and there's your 14 for the silicon. I'd like to point out, if you look at P32, you got more neutrons than protons, so you degrade a neutron. If you look at P30, you got more protons than neutrons, so a proton degrades to try to get to the N to P ratio that's the best. Okay. The last one, electron capture, is that weird one. It's not really radiation. Nothing's coming out of the nucleus. The electron falls into the nucleus. The electron gets converted in energy for it, you know, reacts with the proton. But the net result is the opposite of beta decay, an electron and proton make a neutron. A lot of students, in this example, you can see you got a nuclid, you got an electron, you have another nuclid. It looks a lot like beta decay, except there's no arrow here and a plus sign there. It's the reverse. This is the only one where you're going to have two reactants. Okay, but pay attention to that. Your equal sign is now over here. 80 minus 1, 81 minus 1 is 80. Okay, A would be mercury. So talent would turn into mercury. No change in the atomic number because we're not losing any, I mean, atomic mass because we're not losing any mass. So let's look and practice at some of these that we got going on here. We got cobalt 60, high energy state going to cobalt 60. And in here, basically, this is my equal sign 60 equals 60, so that has to be a zero. 27 equals 27, that's a zero. The only one that's zero, zero is gamma. And that's how we know the answer is gamma with gamma decay. Iodide, there's my equal sign. Iodide's 138, no change in mass, so we gotta have a 138. 53, not minus 1, 53 equals minus 1 plus what? This has to be 54. From the periodic table, you know that's gotta be xenon. So I'm writing the atomic number first, then the symbol that matches the number. These are transformation reactions. Basic alchemy, we're changing the element because we're changing the number of protons. Because we're releasing a beta particle, it's beta decay. Change up to green. Here we have, ooh, look, electron is a reactant. So you know we're gonna do electron capture, okay? Put our equal sign over here, no change in mass, that's 82. 38 plus a negative one, that would be 37. And that is yttrium, which is why we got yttrium. Whoops. I don't know. I think that might be rubidium. That should not be a 39. Okay, I did that backwards. Oh my goodness gracious. How embarrassing. Rubidium. Okay. Good thing I got the periodic table matter. Oh, there's rubidium. Okay. Whew. And this one, equal signs here. Plus 1, plus 36. Now we got 37. Zero plus, that's 82. We got another rubidium. They're both rubidium. One's rubidium is being formed here. Okay. From uh, electron capture. Here, the rubidium then goes on to do posit positron emission. Something's wrong there. Sorry about that. 
Copernicium is my last one, one of the big guys. Copernicium is a lot, 285, 112. They got one ton over here. If it looks like the mass is changing, atomic number is changing, we got to change it four up top, change it two on the bottom. That's got to be helium because of the two. All right, that's alpha decay. Ooh, messed up a little bit, but saved it. We're good to go. Okay, follow the atomic number, follow the atomic masses. Remember, the atomic number determines the symbol. The bottom number does. And our last example, I phrase it differently just to get it across to you. Nitrogen has a blah, 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 few isotopes. Basically, what I'm saying is write two decay equations, carbon 15 to N15, O15 to N15. This is the same idea, but phrased differently. For carbon 15 to go to N15, we need to gain a proton, keep the mass the same. Something that gains a proton, okay, would be a neutron to proton conversion, and that's beta decay. So carbon 15 has to undergo beta decay. And that means make release the beta particle right here. And our next one, O15 to N15, we need to lose a proton, keep the mass, there's a proton. Yeah, can a proton lose a proton? So similar. You're going to keep the mass the same. The way you're going to lose a proton is one proton needs to degrade to a neutron. When that happens, that's positron emission. So keep this idea of O15 to N15 and emit a positron. So you need to know your transformation reactions. You need to be able to see them, The I think, the easier way, and then that's sort of the harder way you have to think about it a little bit more. Whew, that's a lot. Hope you like it. <laughs> Have a good time with it. I'm Dr. Manis. We'll talk later.